The following is a presentation of the Big East Conference Television Network. Georgetown's Reggie Williams, the last link to the Hoyas National Championship team, leads Georgetown in scoring and rebounding and has played all five positions on the floor for John Thompson's Georgetown Club. Second-year coach Rick Pitino at Providence College has taken the Friars from the bottom to near the top of the heap, and they've done it with a three-point field goal. Billy Donovan won the best at that art this season, leading the Friars in scoring. Tonight, it's Georgetown and Providence. The Hoyas of Georgetown meet the Friars of Providence College. Big East basketball is brought to you by Piedmont, serving more cities in the East than any other airline. By Chrysler Motors, the official car and truck of the Big East, and your local Chrysler Plymouth and Dodge dealers. By Avis Rent-A-Car, the official rental car of the Big East Conference. Providence College Basketball is brought to you by Narragansett Electric, putting your needs first. Winter, distributor of the finest doors, windows, and moldings in the Northeast. And Carpet Giant, with locations in Seekonk, Warwick, and New London, Connecticut. The Providence Civic Center holds 12,500. It will be SRO tonight as Providence meets Georgetown. They hold some rock concerts in this building, but nothing will be more of a rock and roll affair than tonight's game between the Friars and the Hoyers. Good evening, everybody. I'm Howard David, along with Dave Gavitt. Not since the mid-70s when Dave Gavitt coached here has there been a game that has drawn this much attention in Providence. There have been games that have drawn as many people, but I think not the enthusiasm. And when you saw the students file in here at 6 o'clock tonight with their faces all painted, I think you see that Patino has lit a fire under this community. The team comes in 14-3, and three, tied for second with Georgetown, and uh, this place is alive. We're seeing two teams tonight that have similarities and, yes, some dissimilarities as well. Well, I think the similarities are obvious. Both coaches play a lot of people. Uh, they'll lead uh, with 11 or, or 10 guys from each team, a lot of bench scoring, a lot of pressure defense, a lot of changing, a lot of fast breaks, a lot of three-pointers. The dissimilarities are that Providence, if you can shut off the three-pointer, has had trouble scoring inside. Georgetown takes you to the offensive board. With the amount of people that each team plays, obviously they are among the best in the nation in bench scoring. Georgetown number one, Providence number two. And I think that both coaches, Thompson really set the standard for this years ago. Patino believes in it as well. They develop their benches by playing people. And you play them in December and they make the mistakes. But now all of a sudden when you're 17 games into the season, freshmen are no longer freshmen. Once upon a time, Providence, one of the doormats of the Big East. That is no longer the case. And it is further punctuated since Ricky Patino's come aboard. Well, I think he's given this team a lot of confidence. And he's got the people, the student body, uh, believing in him. This is not an easy place to come and play anymore, but Georgetown goes on the road and plays before big crowds all the time. Put your seatbelts on. This is going to be a wild one. Providence and Georgetown coming up next. Well, the introduction of the starting lineups in just a moment. This may sound funny coming from the president of an electric company, but I don't like getting bigger electric bills in the winter any more than you do. So we did something about it. We created the Narragansett Electric Budget Billing Plan. Under the plan, your total average yearly electric bill is divided into equal monthly payments. Even during the months you use more electricity, your payment stays the same. So if you like electric bills, without any surprises, call us to sign up for budget billing. I just love your new home. Thank you. Your windows are beautiful. They're the very latest Peachtree's Aerial Insulated Windows. These are real wood. Ours are those awful loose snap-in grills. Here's the best part. This entire wood section lifts <laughs> up. Look at that. So the window is easier to stain, paint, and clean. clean. And you can paint this window shut. Peachtree designed Ariel to open and shut easily. For your nearest Peachtree retailer, call 1-800-447-4700.
Career education. One of your most important decisions. Did you know that New England Tech is the number one choice, the most respected name in private career education? Here's why. The faculty and courses are great. The new campus and lab equipment are state of the art. Leading employers hire New England Tech grad. New England Tech, the most respected name in private career education. Be a New England Tech graduate or compete with one. Carpet Giant has so many ways to beautify your floor. It's a carpet supermarket. It's really quite a store. So roll them out and put them down at the lowest price around. At Carpet Giant. You get the very best going down. Save 20 to 50% all this week at all Carpet Giants during the annual after inventory carpet clearance. Don't miss it. Back at the Providence Civic Center, Howard David and Dave Gavitt. We spoke at the top about the crowd of 12.5 or more, Dave. What effect, if anything, will there be or what effect will it have on Georgetown? Well, I think it tends to pump up the home team. It has varying effects on the visitors. In my opinion, on Georgetown, very little. They play on the road all the time. They play before tough crowds. And I have a feeling that John Thompson, because he's very popular in this city, went to school here, he steals himself for this visit. He'll be ready. All right, let's go to the public address announcer for the introduction to the starting lineups. And here's Ray Bagley. Here are your starting lineups. Starting at forward for Georgetown, 6'4 junior from New Orleans, Louisiana, number 10, Perry McDonald. At forward for Providence College, 6'7 senior from Kitchener, Ontario, number 15, David Kipfer. At forward for Georgetown, 6'7 senior from Baltimore, Maryland, number 34, Reggie Williams. At forward for Providence College, 6'7", senior from Germantown, Pennsylvania, number 23, Ernie Pop Lewis. At center for Georgetown, 7-foot junior from Detroit, Michigan, number 51, Ben Guillory. At center for Providence College, a 6'10", senior from Central Falls, Rhode Island, number 50, Yazik Duda. At guard for Georgetown, 6'2 freshman from New Orleans, Louisiana, number 12, Dwayne Bryan. At guard for Providence, 6'4 junior from Michigan City, Indiana, number 12, Delray Brooks. At guard for Georgetown, 6'2 freshman from Washington, D.C., number 20, Mark Tillman. At guard for Providence College, a six-foot senior from Rockville Center, Long Island, number 34, Billy Donovan. The head coach of the Hoyers, John Thompson. The head coach of the Friars, Rick Patino. Well, as one of the great race callers of all time, Fred Capicello once said, it is now post time. The pregame hoopla is over. Get ready. Georgetown and Providence coming up. The Providence Civic Center expected and should be sold out by the time we get early on in the first half. Here are the comparisons of the two teams. Georgetown, one of the poorest shooting teams in the Big East, shooting only 46% from the floor. So is Providence also the same but look at the three-point accuracy for the two teams Dave well both are not afraid to shoot three-pointers for Providence they've got Billy Donovan Delray Brooks and Ernie Pop Lewis all three uh, can fire and hit and for Georgetown of course Reggie Williams along with Mark Tillman two guys you've got to keep your eye on from three-point field goal range you would expect as you look at Ben Guillory who's standing on the left Guillory number 51 in the last few games what John Thompson has done is use Guillory in the opening tip and then bring Ronnie Highsmith into the ball game. So we'll see what he does here. Yasik Duda to jump center with Guillory. And the tap is controlled by Georgetown and Reggie Williams. The quick pass on the right side to Tillman. The shot is blocked over the top by Lewis, but he got a piece of the body. Mickey Crowley makes the call on Ernie Pop Lewis. Oh, 
Both teams will transition basketball anytime they get an opportunity. You saw Reggie Williams there with an excellent lead pass off the uh, off the tap, up ahead to Tillman. He misses the first. Mark Tillman, a 51% free throw shooter, averaging 10 and a half points per ball game. The freshman from Washington had 19 against DePaul in the win over previously unbeaten Blue Demons. Here comes the press from Georgetown. Full court zone up on the ball. Providence will try to get through this and take the three-pointer if they have it. Delray Brooks right to the basket and he gets the roll over the rim. Brooks the transfer from Indiana. Now Providence answering with their press. They break the pressure. It is now Tillman going one-on-one -on -one with Dudek. Dudek slaps the ball away from him. Loose on the floor and Billy Donovan comes up with it. Kipfer and Lewis back to Kipfer for the short jumper. He's got it. Providence off to a 4-1 start. Don't expect Georgetown to be rattled. They have faced pressure. Even as freshmen, they have faced it. Guillory with the jam. That will quiet the crowd. The lead the other way. Lewis gets fouled from behind by Guillory, but Lewis really wanted the stuff. Well, both these teams do an excellent job, Howard, because they're so used to running and pressing themselves. When they score, when you're scored against, they'll get it out of bounds and get it right up the court, and that's exactly what happened here. Donovan found Pop Lewis ahead of the field. He's quicker than Guillory, who plays the back of the Georgetown Press, and uh, he had trouble recovering. Ernie Pop Lewis, an 84% free throw shooter, averaging 11 points per ball game. Coming off a very big game at Connecticut, a game that Providence did not play particularly well. Donovan and Brooks, who are the guts of their offense, had cold days, and Pop Lewis bailed them out. Lewis two for two from the line. Providence showing all court pressure. This was important in Pacino's game plan to start well. Keep the crowd excited, keep them into the game. Perry McDonald now works it around to Bryant. Now Williams. Williams gets the double team. Perry McDonald inside of the turnaround. Dudek had the rebound on the floor. We're going to get the release to Delray Brooks and to Billy Donovan. Left side to Lewis. Providence was out here until 5.15 tonight. Still going through a walkthrough. Here's the turnover created by Reggie Williams. Tillman stripped away by Billy Donovan, but a foul on the call on the play. I don't think so. Yeah, okay. Lead official, Mickey Crowley. The officials are Crowley, Jim Howell, Jack Hannon. You'll see the replay. Here's the Georgetown freshman guard tandem, Dwayne Bryant, very quietly becoming one of the top assist men in the league. And he hits Mark Tillman ahead of the field. You got a glimpse of the two principals, Thompson and Patino, and Billy Donovan, his first foul. Tillman to the line, two shots. You've got to be impressed with, with the play of these two freshman guards for Georgetown. Thompson has had him in the ball game in crunch time. Sunday against DePaul, they knock off the Blue Demons, send them from the ranks of the unbeaten. They're down eight, down the wire. The two guards are two freshmen, Dwayne Bryant and Mark Tillman. Tillman three for four from the line. It is a 6-5 Providence lead. We've played a minute and a half. Providence Civic Center is where you are. Howard David and Dave Gavitt bringing you these, this telecast tonight. Pop Lewis from three-point range. For those fans in Washington that have not seen Providence play before, don't be surprised to see that three-pointer go up any time. The last two games, they've attempted 31 three-pointers in each ballgame. Inside it goes to McDonald. Finds Tillman on the outside. Reggie Williams, three-point range. He's not shy to take that either. And a foul is going to be called. I think it's on Pop Lewis. If it is, that would be his second. Howard, candidly, Providence fouls a lot. And, and Patino, you know, he's not teaching them to foul, but he wants them to play aggressively. And so he doesn't get on people for fouls as long as they're aggressive. Uh, performances to try to get the ball. Nice good, back door. Good cut. Bryant with the jumper off the Williams pass. Dwayne Bryant, his first field goal of the night. We are 9-7 Providence in front. Donovan, leading scorer, finds Delray Brooks three-pointer. It is Brooks and Donovan, the dynamic duo as they are built here. Last touched, I believe, by Reggie Williams. Good call by the official Jim Howell. Right on top of the play. It looked to me right in front of us that Williams touched it last. Credit Delray Brooks with a good defensive job. 
Providence 14 and 3, 4 and 2 in the Big East. Georgetown 14 and 2 and 4 and 2 in the Big East. And right in front of us, the foul is going to be called on Mark Tillman, the freshman. You almost ended up with David Kipfer in your lap on that one. It's a lot of lap, too. 6-7 over here. Dave Kipfer from Ontario. Nickname is the Blue Collar, primarily for his work ethic. Well, he goes at the offensive board, picks up all the loose garbage. A concern for the Friars tonight, Georgetown's quickness inside. Georgetown's not a real big team, but they're a real quick team. Amazing thing is, as poor as Georgetown shoots from the outside, their record. Tremendous offensive rebounding by the Hoyas. Kipper with a good board inside. Ball was tipped in, I thought, in the cylinder. I think the net was touched by Duda while the ball was over the ring. It should have been waved off if, if we're right. So the field goal by Kipfer, his second for four, and a foul against Delray Brooks. And meanwhile, on the floor, as you see, Dwayne Bryant slow getting up, but he's all right. And he's okay. This play ended up with, you see, Brooks did not have position. You think there's a little intensity there? There's three people. John Thompson was walking out onto the floor, and the crowd gave him a hefty round of boos. And John, who played up here at Providence College, now is the uh, nasty visitor instead of the home player. Meanwhile, Bryant is hurt. See Laurie Michael, the Georgetown trainer. Looks like he got a good bang on the knee. Hopefully, he'll be all right. Bobby Winston's in the game now at the guard. Here he is, number four. Also, Ronnie Highsmith in, in the pivot. Statute of limitations has run out both on Thompson and me locally, you know. <laughs> when, when the refs call fouls against Providence, people get mad at me, and John is the enemy now when he comes to town. Reggie Williams. Oh, beautiful. Kisses it off the glass, and a foul is called. Let me say something about Reggie Williams. You know, he leads Georgetown in just about every single category. For me, the word All-American candidate, you can eliminate the candidate. Uh, this guy's like, you know, the comfortable old shoe in your closet. He's been around so long. But gone now are Michael Jackson and David Wingate, Ralph Dalton, Horace Broadnax. And now he's the, the senior leadership, and he does everything for this team. Incredible. Here he, here he comes up with a steal, and a foul is going to be called. There have been some substitutions made, and we'll run them down. As you look at Billy Donovan, I believe it was Billy that got called for the foul. Substitutions in the ball game. If it is on Billy, that is his second, and it is. There's Reggie with the steal, and he gets fouled here before he goes up for the shot, so the Hoyas will inbound underneath. Marty Conlon's in the game for Providence. Steve Wright, Carlton Screen. Georgetown with Bobby Winston, as you see him handling the ball here. Providence in a matchup zone, but they play it very aggressively. And you see Villanova play this defense a lot, but the Friars will extend it, Howard, and try to keep constant pressure on the ball. Georgetown would like to find Reggie Williams' corners and baseline. Three-point try. Off the mark, the rebound to Ernie Lewis. Here comes Donovan looking diagonally to the left corner. They worked on that in, the, in practice today. Here's Screen in the lane. Nice dish to Conlon. And a foul is going to be called. Pretty pass by Carlton Screen inside to Marty Conlon. Carlton Screen started off the season hurt, couldn't play uh, for the beginning of the year as Delray Brooks, Brooks was not able to play the transfer from Indiana. When those two players became available to Rick Patino on December 20th, this team started to take on a whole different look because it started to give Billy Donovan a little rest. Jaron Jackson, the sophomore from New Orleans, comes into the ball game for Georgetown. Conlon to the line for two. Marty Conlon, a good passer, who's on the all New York City squad with his teammates, Shamsuddin and Carlton Screen, both. If you're a Providence fan or a Georgetown fan, you've got to like all the freshmen that are playing in this game and playing well. A lot of people, we expected to see it, and it has been as advertised. 16-9, Providence with 15.46 remaining. We'll come right back. This copyrighted telecast is produced by authority of the Big East Conference and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Big East Conference is prohibited. Howard David along with Dave Gavitt at the Providence Civic Center where John Thompson's Hoyas meeting up with Rick Petito's Friars in a key game in the Big East. Each team four and two in the conference. They trail Syracuse by a game and a half. I think each team has really been able to establish what they want to do early here. 
with the exception that Georgetown has not really been able to, to capitalize on the offensive board as much as they like it. There's some double team pressure on Williams. And they steal created by screen. Donovan back to screen with the floater. Carlton Screen has made his presence felt early on. Georgetown trailing Providence by nine. It's Georgetown's ball on the inbounds. John Thompson has taken the Hoyas to eight straight NC2A tournaments. And he will be the U.S. Olympic coach in 1988. Pop Lewis commits the third foul on Lewis. He's going to have to sit down, and Patino's going to have to make a substitution. Most likely Daryl Wright, sophomore. Good athletic kid whose playing time, quite honestly, has been cut down by the fact that Lewis is playing so well. So Pop Lewis is going to sit down early. He got three fouls in four minutes and 34 seconds. Patino's over there telling him, you know, what good are you to me on the bench? Jaron Jackson to the free throw line. Would you believe they're already in the bonus? Donovan gets the rebound in the middle of the lane. Somebody forgot to box out. Well, keep in mind that the erratic free throw shootings, you know, not uh, unusual for the Hoyas either. And they're going to get a lot of chances tonight. Providence over the limit. We're, we have 15 minutes left to go in the first half. Screen has confidence. A freshman from Brooklyn Zavarian High School. It's a 20 to 9 Providence lead in the Hoy Bobby Winston. And now John Thompson has told his players, let's call timeout. We have to regroup, gentlemen, because it is not working. But don't you know that the man has had so much experience in hostile buildings to get his team settled down a little bit? Well, for Providence, the start couldn't be better. Tomorrow's another game. Read all about it in the Providence Journal Bulletin. Kentucky Fried Chicken's gonna give you a... Square deal! The Square Deal. A whole lot of food for a real low price. Just $1.99. Square deal! Come in now and get two tender, juicy pieces of Kentucky Fried Chicken. But that's not all. Square Deal! Our Square Deal also gives you hot mashed potatoes with gravy and a fresh buttermilk biscuit. Square Deal! So come in now for our Square Deal. A whole lot of food for just $1.99. Friars of Providence leading 20-9. to 9. Just how good is this Providence start? Well, if they keep it up at this pace, they're going to score 160 points in the game. That tells you how good it is. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the turnover story thus far. Georgetown has turned it over four times. Providence twice. And Georgetown's hurt themselves at the line. They've missed some free throws that would have, uh, would have made this margin a little less. Now you see the Hoyas come with pressure, and they're going to make somebody other than Billy Donovan handle the ball if they can. Billy Donovan breaks the pressure. This is Kipfer now right. Carlton screen. Donovan three-point land. Ball still alive. And it is Reggie Williams who comes up with it. The quick outlet to Bobby Winston in transition. You know, one thing about these two teams, too, they are in unbelievable shape. Both these ball clubs can run and run forever. You have to be to play with either one of these squads right now. I don't think we'll see the shot clock expire anytime soon with 25 on the shot clock remaining. Inside to Ronnie Highsmith. This is Tillman, now Winston. And as I mentioned about the shot clock, it is now down to 15. Tillman got kipped for airborne. It's short. Last touched by Providence. It'll be Georgetown ball as Mark Bryant, or Dwayne Bryant, rather, checks back into the ball game. And a look at Rick Pitino in his second year. Bobby Winston sits down for Georgetown. The Hoyas need to try to find Reggie Williams. Providence certainly keen this matchup aggressive zone on Reggie, trying to keep in touch with him on the baseline. Barry McDonald 
kisses it off the glass. Tough inside, real tough inside. 6'4", he's got all the moves. At 6'4", he gets up with the guys that are five inches bigger. Donovan has it poked away from behind by Tillman. Highsmith almost highlighted the half-court line there. He was lucky that McDonald was running hard. He had no one to pass to in the front court. McDonald wants to work it inside. This is Dwayne Bryant. With the pop, basket Ooh. counts, and a foul is called. What a pretty move. Steve Wright commits the foul on Bryant as Yasik Duda comes into the game. Well, that was quite a move by Dwayne Bryant. He not only made the penetration, but he got hit as he went up. You'll see it here, and yet he had enough balance to still get the shot up soft and has an opportunity here for the three-point play that could bring the Hoyas back to six. Bryant makes the conventional three-point play. For Dwayne Bryant, he has five points in the ball game, and the Hoyas have now run off five unanswered points. One of, the, one of the interesting coaching decisions that you've got if you're Patino and Thompson in this game is you like to press. Brooks from the corner misses. Got a foul inside. Jackie Hannon making the call, and I think the foul is going to go against Georgetown. Against Highsmith, I think. But just to finish that thought, you know, one of the things, if people attack your pressure to score, sometimes you might think twice about it. Both these teams just attack. They don't know anything else. Get it through and get it up the court. In an outnumbered situation, they take the jump shot, and they take it to the glass. Jonathan Edwards in for Highsmith. Highsmith is second foul, and Jonathan Edwards, who suffered with that bad back throughout the month of December, has only played about, what, the last four. Kipper wants to work it inside. Darrell Wright, two-point field goal try is no good. Ball bounced off McDonald's head as Kipper as Duda came down with it. And that's the quick hands again of McDonald giving away five inches but bats it away. Dwayne Bryant and Mark Tillman, the freshman guards for Georgetown. Perry McDonald. Here's Bryant in the corner. Boy, Georgetown moves so well without the ball. A lot of movement. Providence defense doing a good job moving with him to this point. There's the foul. If that is a foul on Billy Donovan, well, no, it's Delray Brooks who gets called for the personal. For Delray Brooks, that is his first. Billy Donovan already has two, and they cannot afford to have Donovan on the bench. Pop Lewis has three. Delray Brooks, the transfer from Indiana. Passed up North Carolina State to come to Providence College. I guess they were interested in him down there with Jimmy Valvano at his club. I asked Delray during warm-ups tonight whether he, someone had tipped him off that the three-point field goal was coming in because it's been a real boost to him in his game in the Providence system that Patino employs, the wide-open transition game, and Delray thrives. 34 points at Villanova and a big 18-point Providence win on the road a couple weeks ago. McDonald misses both free throws poorly, and Delray Brooks now bringing it across the timeline. Georgetown had made its free throws. Howard, this game was tied. Meanwhile, it is a six-point lead for Providence with 12 and a half to play in the first half. Okay, here's the Hoyer in their point matchup zone for the first time. They've got to keep in touch with Donovan on the top. Kipfer, the short jumper, gets the roll. David Kipfer, three field goals for six. And it's an eight-point lead for Providence. They led by as many as 11. Georgetown pushes it up the floor to hurry. Ball poked from behind by Delray Brooks, creating the turnover. Brooks had Kipfer inside and did not get it to him quick enough. Well, when they come up in transition like that, you watch. They'll look for the two big guys inside, and the, the three-point shooters will be fanned out on the line. Kipfer has it rejected by Edwards, and we're going to get a foul called on Kipfer as he submarined Perry McDonald. For Dave Kipfer, that is his first, and Providence their fifth team foul. Here's the replay here. Perry McDonald beats Kipfer to the ball. Want to talk about effort? Wow. Interestingly, uh, when Patino was hired at his first press conference, he said, I don't know how good we're going to be or how quick we can get things going, but we're going to lead the league in diving for loose balls and jumping over the scoring table and being into the press row, and he's been true to his word. Perry McDonald, the two-time junior Olympic Golden Gloves champion. Did a great job when Georgetown played St. John's down at Landover. The job that McDonald did he took everybody in the lane with him, and nobody could stop him. Makes both free throws this time, which is a better display than his last time down, when he missed them both. And brings Georgetown within six. Donovan, three-point range. 
And the rebound of Mark Tillman. They try to work it inside, and it is Darrell Wright who comes up with a loose ball for the Friars. Donovan has missed his first three three-point tries, but he'll keep putting it up. One of the coaches in the Big East, I believe it was Jim Calhoun, said a lot of teams come down and use the three-pointer every now and again. Providence comes down, and it's part of their offense. It's part of their routine. Good backdoor inside to Duda. Yasek Duda with the bucket, his first. It's an eight-point lead, and right back comes Tillman for Georgetown. Answers him back. Tough move. He had both Donovan and Brooks tracking him from behind. Here's Providence right back the other way. Foul is going to be called on Jonathan Edwards, but if he doesn't foul, Dave Kipper going to the hoop. It's an easy deuce. Good foul by Jonathan Edwards. Well, that's again that situation where both these teams do such a good job pushing the ball back up the court after you've scored against them. You know, you can you can play transition basketball off steals and rebounds, but when you play transition basketball after you've been scored against, then you're playing transition basketball. Kipper to the line for two. Donovan sits down and Carlton screen back in the game in the Providence backcourt. Kipper with seven points. Well, don't you know, just look at him, you know he's already worked very hard. Georgetown makes you work hard. Well, I, I've, I've had a theory that since day one in the Big East Conference that people have played up to Georgetown's level of intensity. And I, and I really believe that. I think that Thompson has set the standard for, for how intensely you have to play. How about that fast break? Okay. Everybody playing over the cylinder. And it's Jonathan Edwards who gets the basket and a foul is called. Well, that was awful close to being basket interference again, I think, on the first one. But there's such quickness and such jumping ability. This is an excellent pass. Now, there goes McDonald. No? Good call. It was not. Look at a strong rebound by Jonathan Edwards. He gets fouled by Darrell Wright. He'll go to the line with a chance for a conventional three-point play. And this is where the Hoyas have hurt so many teams this year on that offensive board. St. John's really one of the better defensive rebounding teams in the country, and, and Georgetown just took it to him that night in the Jonathan, captain. Jonathan Edwards, like Georgetown, not a very good free throw shooter. He's missed all four free throws he's taken this year. Oh, great great move. save. Bobby Winston, big time play. Bryant, pass taken away by Delray Brooks. And you're going to see a lot of this all night. A lot of bodies flying all over the place. Well, it's such a hard game to referee when it's 94 feet and up and down. There's so many plays, you know. Georgetown coming off the big win over DePaul to stop their unbeaten streak this year. Reggie Williams, a little short, gets his own rebound. A lot of players in college basketball today don't do enough of that. Follow their shot. Well, I'm not sure if, there isn't, if there's anything that Reggie Williams doesn't do. You know, just take a look at Providence has done a pretty good job of, uh, job of pointing on Reggie. He hasn't had a lot of shooting opportunities. But as you say, here he hits front rim. He follows his own shot, gets it back, and gets fouled by Duda there. He's played point guard. He's played center. He's played forward. He hit the three-pointer to get him out of the hole against DePaul on Sunday. He's the release man against the Providence press. Calls the defensive changes. Terrific player. He's going to be, I think, a great second guard, number two guard in the NBA. Reggie, an 83% free throw shooter. Charles Smith in the game, the sophomore from Washington, D.C. He was a late recruit for John Thompson. Reggie makes one of two from the line. Williams with only three points thus far. Georgetown trailing Providence, as you see, by five. Billy well, Donovan Smith. back in the game. Smith will try to dog Donovan and work him and try to get him a little leg, leg wear if he can. Smith's got quick feet. Donovan, three-point try. Jonathan Edwards with the rebound and the quick outlet to Charles Smith. Nice pass to Reggie Williams. Reggie gets the ball. He knows what to do with it. That one goes. The crowd wanted a walk, and they're going to call a timeout. Providence will. Patino, once upon a time, had an 11-point lead. His lead is now reduced to three. The score, Providence 26, Georgetown 23 now. We'll come back after these words from your local station. Halftime of our telecast tonight. We'll have a focus of Providence's Billy Donovan. A look around the Big East and a first half recap. In the last five minutes and 26 seconds, Georgetown has outscored Providence 14 to 6. The Georgetown defense has taken its effect. They're starting to get back. 
not letting Providence beat them up the court. But on the other hand, Donovan has had some three-point opportunities, and he normally would stick those right in the bottom. One of the top three-point field goal percentage shooters in the country. Tillman and Screen going nose-to-nose. -nose. Donovan, Darrell Wright. Screen inside to Kipper. The backdoor cut to Donovan. Great anticipation by Charles Smith. Here Don comes Winston. And he went right over the top. Should be an offensive foul. Block. They're going to call it a block. No, it's a charge on Winston. Charge, you're right. He just put his head down and went right into screen. Screen took the charge. Now you see it here. This is really a nice move by Donovan and a great recovery by Charles Smith. It was a set play and a back door. And at the other end, Carlton Screen with a good job getting the charge. And Screen here gets, draws the uh, blocking foul on Mark Tillman. That is his second foul. Flips Georgetown over the limit, so Friars will be one and one the rest of the way now. So Carlton Screen will go to the line, one and one, as you get a look at Mark Tillman. Carlton Screen had a bit of a stress fracture, and they gave him, as you look at Jaron Jackson back in the ball game, they, they thought they would use the technique of putting him into a swimming pool to help heal him. There's only one problem, Carlton can't swim. <laughs> he told them that. <laughs> he gets the role. He can play basketball, I'll tell you that. He's been a real uh, addition to this team. When he's in the ball game, he handles the ball, and that lets Billy Donovan operate off the ball. Going Up. out of the game, Yasek Duda and Abdul Shamsuddin comes out of the game. He, along with this man, Carlton Screen, all New York City players. Friars have a, another good-looking young freshman, Marty Conlon, from New York as well at 6'10", who was in earlier. Good recruiting class for Pacino in his first year. Bobby Winston rejected by Dean, and the foul is going to be called on Abdul Shamsuddin. He was, his name once upon a time was Jeffrey Smith, and then his mother and father uh, became Muslims and changed his name. Ricky Patino, his name has been the same his whole life, and he's been a terror both on the court and on the sidelines. Well, I can't help but think as I look at Patino and Thompson, the two personify one of the great things that you have to have to be a success in college basketball coaching today. Unbelievable work ethic, and they spend a lot of time with the kids on their team. The respect level is obviously there. Their kids graduate. They do the job. They do the whole job, the total program, both of them. Winston cans both free throws. Brings the Hoyas within two. Once upon a time, Providence enjoyed an 11-point lead, but you knew that Georgetown was not going to let it stay that way anytime soon. They're just a tremendous team to come back. They did it against DePaul. They were down nine with 2.44 to go and won the ball game. Kipper looking for the open man screen who wants to go inside with the floater, and he gets the roll. Carlton Screen with seven points. He came in averaging about five a game. No one told him he was a freshman yet. <laughs> nice. nice pass. Pretty pass. Oh, that's Smith great. into Winston. Great pass and an excellent move without the ball by Bobby Winston. Thompson is loaded at guard. Has a lot of people that can play. He's loaded, period. His team is just very deep, very young. Both teams the same. Well, John recruits athletes, and it shows. 6'4 to 6'7. A lot of guys that can move their feet and can run and can do things. And he gets them to play as a team, gets them to play defense, and gets them to play with pride. Donovan. The alley-oop inside to Kipper. Ball is still alive. Dean with the left hand. Coming out of it is Jaron Jackson ahead to Williams. They run the fast break to Charles Smith. And he slows it up smartly, slows it up. Good decision. Good job by Providence getting back. Coming into the game is Marty Conlon. Ball was kicked. So Conlon checks back in. Kipfer goes to the sidelines. You know, you want to say new 45, but doesn't make any difference, does it? Nobody's going to get even close to the 45-second shot clock in this one. Sam Jefferson checks in, number 50, and Jonathan Edwards comes out. So with Jefferson, Edwards, and Guillory, you almost like have a three-headed center. You have 15 fouls to give. I think John has now played the 11 guys that he likes to play, and Patino's played the 10 that he likes to play. So they both hit their normal quota. 21 guys have seen action in the first half. Thompson has used 11 different people as starters this year out of the 13 that are suited up each night. The thing I like about both of them is they have the courage to do it early. When obviously, as you see Smith hit it, 
when obviously there are some kids that aren't quite ready yet, you take the mistakes early because the only way you can improve is to play. Georgetown has tied it up at 29 with 7.05 remaining. First half. Duda lost control, going down with it is right in a traveling violation on number 41, Darrell Wright. Well, that's the rule interpretation. People wonder about that call, but the rule says if you're on the floor and you get up and in the doing, your pivot foot changes, it's a travel. Conversely, if you're down and if you fall down with the ball and you change your pivot foot. Now, here you see, Providence fans want to follow. You see, pick the foot up. Yep, his right foot came up last. It's going to be Georgetown's ball. Delray Brooks is back into the ball game. This is a tough place to get it in now because he can't run the baseline against the press. Darren Jackson and Bobby Winston with Charles Smith. Georgetown going with a small lineup. Winston misses the shot and Conlon tracks it down. The give to Donovan. Notice Billy Donovan always looking diagonally to his left side when he's coming down from the right. Delray Brooks had Winston in the air but refused to shoot. Winston did a great recovery job there. Delray had the three-point stroke. Conlon with room. They don't want Conlon shooting that kind of a shot, and Georgetown now has got it in sync. They can take the lead, and you go to the boss, and he almost brings it in. Darrell Wright with the rebound, the outlet to Donovan. Racehorse basketball, very exciting. Well, you better play defense when you play these folks, either one of them, and you better get back on defense. But for Donovan now, he, he's going to try to get a little weak side help here, I think, on this three-pointer. Watch him go through to the other corner. And the Hoyas make a good adjustment. Reggie goes right with him in the back. Delray Brooks. That's the problem. The defense over shifts to cover Donovan in the right corner, and Delray Brooks hits it from the left top. The ball had to be wet when it came down. Providence leading by three. It's like part of the repertoire. Providence, 29% of their field goal tries this year have been three-pointers. Great steal by Brooks. And over 30% of their points, I think close to 40% of their points have come off three-pointers. Providence ranks second in the nation in three points tries per game, and that one goes down. Delray Brooks is second in a row. That was off a nice setup. Patino brought Duda out high to set a screen for Donovan. He faked off and went the other way. When Georgetown helped, he slid it to Brooks in the corner. Six unanswered points, both three-point field goals by Delray Brooks. John's doing a very interesting thing right now. He's gone four corners. You say, how the heck can you go four corners when you're behind? Because he wants to try to get Providence extended out and get the ball in behind. He did it right there. Darren Jackson, and a blocking foul is going to be called on Yasek Duda of Providence. And Rick Patino frantically getting Donovan and Brooks over the bench. He's trying to tell him, build the defense inside. Let's not take the bait. Let's, we've got the lead. Let's not go out and extend. I told you it was going to be a track meet, but there's a little bit of a chess match as well. You get two accomplished coaches. As you look at Jacek Duda, who played with the Polish junior national team, you get two coaches like a Patino, like a Thompson, like a couple I saw last night, Jim O'Brien and Jim Calhoun. There are some quality, quality coaches in this conference, and that might be an understatement. Well, you're going to earn your money. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I was looking at John walking out here tonight. How about this for Georgetown in nine days? DePaul at home on the road to Providence on the road to Syracuse on the road to St. John's and Madison Square Garden. That's a season for a lot of teams. This, this is not a conference for the faint of heart. 35-30, Providence. Delray Brooks, pretty move around, and there's a transition. Charles Smith, the head of the field, he has Brooks on his tail. And Delray Brooks with a great defensive play. Oh, what a defensive play by Delray Brooks. Not only did he take it away, he kept the ball. And then you would have bet money against anybody catching Charles Smith when Charles had the breakaway. There's a great block at that end. Now, look at Brooks dig. Really makes a good move. Charles Smith thought he had the two. See, Delray was angry because he got a shot block down the other way. And he came from a block shot. He didn't pout. He just got his legs together and made a great play. Donovan tracks it down. The action is furious as Kipfer hits the jump shot from the left side. No good. And a foul is going to be called inside. I think Jonathan Edwards is going to get tagged. 
for his second personal foul. Both teams are over the limit. And they've been over the limit for a while. Screen comes back in for Providence. Mark Tillman checks back in for the Hoyas. And John Thompson holding a little board meeting with his five. Well, he takes advantage of the mass substitution to have a little 10-second uh, timeout on the sideline. The energy level in this building is very, very high. And Patino knew that his Providence team had to get out of the gate well to keep the crowd up and fired up, and he's got them that way. They're standing all around. This is an SRO job. This is one of the 12-5 nights. Dave Kipfer, a 69% free throw shooter, has nine points in the ball game. He came in averaging 11.9 per game. As you can see, he leads the Friars in rebounding as well. Very unnoticed player with this team. Donovan gets a lot of press, so does Delray Brooks. You don't hear much about well, Kipfer. He you, quietly gets it done. You called it right before. He's the blue-collar guy. He does all the tough work, the grunt work in the lane. He picks up a lot of loose garbage. Meanwhile, down the other way, Reggie Williams has five points. The province has done a good job. What they're doing in their defense is they're playing the matchup zone, but as you watch Reggie go through off the ball, they'll actually literally switch him from one player to another. So they're almost playing him man-to-man -man within the confines. See the switch off there from Duda? Traveling violation against Mark Tillman. And we have 343 remaining. We have a TV timeout coming up. Providence led by 11 had the lead reduced to nothing it was a tied game and then providence has retaken the lead one of player of the game to be selected at the conclusion of this game and during every game televised by the big east conference television network as part of the chrysler corporation sponsorship of big east basketball to try to put an mvp of the game i mean you got 22 candidates right now i was going to say i can't eliminate anyone yet <laughs> First time I have ever seen a wave in an indoor building. Well, and we're seeing it now. There's a, you see the guy in the middle of the can of the, the, the picture there. They've got two students who dress up as the Blues Brothers. This is traditionally, even when it's been a big crowd, been an adult crowd that sort of sat and waited for you to entertain them. These kids have gotten the whole building fired up, along with another guy in the end zone called the Phantom Friar. <laughs> so. So it looks to me as though some of the uh, Syracuse mascot stuff is spreading. The Phantom Friar has got to be pledging for fraternity with the outfit he's got on. All right, Providence in front, 37 to 30. They have run off an 8 to 2 spurt, an 8 to 1 spurt, actually, in the last three and a half. Georgetown in the matchup zone now. They need to keep in touch with Brooks on the perimeter, not let the screen penetrate. Good penetration there by Brooks. Right missed the jumper, and Jonathan Edwards with the rebound. The long outlet to Reggie Williams. The gun pass to Perry McDonald and screen made a great defensive play. But a foul is going to be called on Yasek Duda. I guess you could say piling on might be the call. You're, you're seeing on every transition up court, two gunfighters just standing and staring and looking at each other in the eye with a quick draw. And that time it was a great pass by Reggie Williams and a heck of a defensive play by Carlton Screen. And Yasek Duda got the, the uh, call really for the late hit, second man in. But the effort is just unbelievable. You can almost feel the energy going on all throughout the building. Barry McDonald, who missed his first two free throws of the night, has now hit his last three in a row. Once upon a time in high school, McDonald played a little defensive end for the high school team. You look at his size at 6'4", well-built, solid, tough. Gets the roll there, six points for Perry McDonald. Halfway to his average, and Georgetown's lead, or Georgetown now trails by five. Providence led by 11. Georgetown cut it to a tie at 29. Providence brought it back up to seven. It is now five. Great defensive play by Edwards, and it's batted back out by Duda. Again, the effort. Effort on one side by Georgetown. Return effort on the other side. Duda with a big rebound there. Right back up with it. You don't see Yasek Duda go to the basket too much. It's a seven-point lead for Providence. Jonathan Edwards with a good play there, and here's Tillman. Reggie Williams wants it by himself, and Screen picked his pocket. And then in frustration, Reggie Williams committed the foul going down the other way. Carlton Screen is having a half. A freshman from New York, and he doesn't have any idea the magnitude of this game. They call him Paco, and he got into Reggie right there. As Reggie went through, Reggie never saw him. He came from the left side, and you didn't really see it on the replay because Darrell Wright was blocking you off. 
But as Carlton turned and went the other way, Reggie just reached out and grabbed him. It was a good call. Good steal by Carlton Screen. Reggie Williams, who averages about 34 minutes a ball game, the only senior on the starting five for Georgetown, the only senior on the roster for the Hoyas. And there's a great shot right there. The teacher and the student. And someday, everything that Thompson has told Reggie Williams, Reggie will use in the NBA. Well, I think a lot of what he's been telling him over the last three plus years has certainly sunk in. Credit Providence with really doing a good job on, on keeping in touch with Reggie Williams. They, are, they have made some different adjustments in their defense. They're pa actually passing him off in the confines of the matchup from one, from one player to another. Screen with nine points came in averaging less than five a ball game. Tillman almost slid the pivot foot on a walk. Pass inside of Williams. The basket doesn't count on that time. Screen made a freshman mistake. You're not going to block Reggie Williams' shot when you're six foot tall and the other guy is six seven. Yeah, but I told you, Screen doesn't know he's a freshman. <laughs> they forgot to tell him. He says, hey, you know, this is basketball. It's 94 feet, five guys on each team. Let's go play. Reggie Williams has played now all five positions for John Thompson. He played a little point guard against DePaul last weekend. And, and you know, the big plays, I, I thought that the out-of-bounds play against DePaul off the sideline, out-of-bounds off a timeout, really great screen on the play. Set play that they put in at the timeout. Reggie cans it from the corner. Then they go up the other end, and he puts pressure on the ball, and DePaul travels on the sideline, but then he gets it back. Things are going so bad right now for Georgetown, and even Reggie's missing free throws. An 83% free throw shooter, as you can see, averaging less than 23 per ball game. He only has five points. He missed both free throws. Is that rare? Very. So Georgetown down by nine. They have trailed by as many as 11. Delray Brooks trying to put the knockout punch, and it wasn't there, and here's Williams with the rebound. We have a minute and 53 to play, plus 20 minutes in the second half, and this game is not over by any stretch of the imagination. McDonald, Tillman, Winston, Williams, and Edwards for Georgetown. Tillman around Brooks with the running one-hander. It is no good, but Williams underneath of the rebound, muscling for position, gets the basket, and a foul is going to be called on Darrell Wright. Reggie Williams, and that's where the Hoyas, when, when, things, when things aren't going too well, you'll find the guys in blue going to the offensive board. I mean, they have been a tough offensive rebounding team this year, and Reggie Williams there for the chance for the three-point play. One of the problems with trying to keep Georgetown off the offensive board is their quickness, Howard. You know, offensive rebounding is motion. If you can get in motion and get at the glass, and they've got a lot of people with a lot of quickness, and they do a good job of just moving. Reggie Williams with a three-point play, and right now Reggie with eight points. Here comes Delray Brooks with Jonathan Edwards, who got off of him for a moment. Close to five seconds. And a foul is going to be called, I believe, on Jaron Jackson. Jackson, his first personal, with a minute and 17 to play. Rick Pitino, the head coach at Providence, had 17 wins last year. That was the most for a Providence coach since a guy named Gavitt. And his team won 24 ball games nine years ago. Well, Rick came within one field goal of getting to the NIT semifinals. And really a remarkable job that this young man has done here. And he's done it with a well-organized staff, with a lot of energy, and with getting his kids to have confidence in their style and in himself. Yasek Duda with five points in the ball game. Patino getting points from unexpected sources tonight. Duda with five. He normally averages less than four. Screen with nine averages half that. The adrenaline. Almost a great play by Brooks. Boy, don't you know that Reggie Williams is going to come out in the second half fired up. And he's the catalyst. He's the leader of the team. Well, every time they've been in trouble, he's the guy that's, uh, that showed them the way. But the freshmen have really done a good job. Good shot by Smith. Bangs in and out. Goes in and out, and a foul is going to be called, I think, on Reggie Williams, who has now quickly gotten two fouls with 58 seconds remaining. And they'll go to the free throw line, one and one. Providence leading 42 to 35. The Friars ranked third in the nation in scoring, averaging a little better than 90 points per game. 
and Duda to the free throw line, one and one. Harry McDonald will check back into the game, and Reggie Williams sits down. Thompson does not want to see Reggie with a third foul on the last minute. It's called preventive coaching, preventive medicine. Duda, defector from the Polish national team. Lane violation by Edwards, but it won't be called because the ball goes in. Duda with six points in the game. Because you know what, Bobby Knight, Bobby Knight always teases Bill Parcells, his close friend and coach of the Super Bowl champion Giants. He said, I hate when you go into that prevent defense because all you're doing is preventing yourself from stopping it. <laughs> Shamsuddin into the game and John Thompson's team down by eight. He's still smiling. They're down nine. But he knows that they're going to come back in the second half and make it a tough game. How does he know that? <laughs> Track record. <laughs> I won't argue that. Nine-point game. Providence in front. They have led by as many as 11. Georgetown cut it to an even game at 29. And since that point, it has been a 15-6 to six spurt for Providence. Georgetown would like to get it inside to Perry McDonald here, or if they can, or to Jonathan Edwards. Try to get the three-pointer the other way, the old-fashioned way. Earn it down in the paint. We've got McDonald matched up on Shamsuddin. 20 on the shot clock, 32 on the half. Smith all the way inside, doesn't get the basket, but he does draw the foul. And did he ever show you some quickness and some courage there? You know, Charles Smith doesn't carry a lot of weight on him, and he's taking it into the lands of the giant. You see it here. Brooks almost steals it. Now Smith has a lane, and to the basket he goes. And Shamsu Dean gets him on the way by. Charles Smith, the sophomore from Washington, D.C., a 57.6% free throw shooter. You'll see Patino go for the last shot, I would think, off this, unless he can get Donovan a wide-open three-pointer. Free throw is missed. It is a two-shot foul. And very quickly, Sam Jefferson checks into the game for Jonathan Edwards, number 50. The halftime stats, when they come up, uh, are not going to be flattering to Georgetown from the foul line, Howard. Well, Smith makes one of two. He has three points in the ball game. And now Providence, with 25 seconds remaining, will set it up for one shot. And you'll see the four corners out of the Friars now. Almost a steal by Charles Smith. Looking for the charge. If you don't have your Blue Cross Blue Shield paid up when you become a member of the Hoyas, you better get it paid up because you're going to do a lot of diving. I think there have been as many bodies on the floor. Here's the two-on-two -two from the top. Travel. Traveling violation against Billy Donovan. So now Georgetown will have the ball with four seconds remaining from side court, albeit on their side of the midcourt line, and they have a chance for one shot. And Reggie Williams comes back into the game. Why do you suppose Reggie comes back? You don't think they'd be searching for a three-point play, do you? Mark Tillman checks back in. Now Providence makes a quick change. See, what's going on while all these changes are being made is that both coaches are setting offense and defense on the sideline. So it's a little bit of a, of a timeout at the same time. Snedeker's in the game for Providence. Reggie Williams with one second to go, just short. So Providence goes off at halftime, and Ricky Patino's got to feel good about it. His team is up eight, but he also knows that it's not enough. You have to do a little bit more than just hit the jab to Georgetown. You've got to throw the right cross once in a while, and we'll see what he does in the second half. The score at halftime. Providence 44, Georgetown 36. We'll come right back. Halftime at the Providence Civic Center. The Friars of Providence leading Georgetown's Hoyas 44 to 36. In tonight's Big East halftime feature, we take a look at one of the nation's most improved players, Billy Donovan of Providence College. When Billy Donovan got out of high school, some thought he was too fat and too slow to play major college basketball. But that was three years and 20 pounds ago, and they never understood the love affair Billy Donovan has with the game. Well, my father coached CYO ever since I, when I was first born, and I used to go to practice all the time and just be in the gym trying to reach the basket when I was about five years old. And ever since then, I just kept on playing and kept on playing. And as time on, as I got towards high school, it got to be very important to me. I saw people playing in front of 20, 30,000 people. It was something I really liked, and that's something I really wanted to do. Playing before the big crowds took a while. As a freshman, Donovan averaged just two points a game. As a sophomore, just three. 
But then came new coach Rick Pitino. The weight disappeared. Donovan got quicker. The scoring average went to 15. And William Donovan suddenly became Billy the Kid. Well, Billy had, as you know, a sensational year last year. Not only does he practice hard, he plays hard with each uh, practice and game, but he's a, a big game player as well. He came through when we needed games and weren't going well with the last second shot on numerous occasions. And he's not afraid to take it and it would also be willing to pass it any time. So that's why like, he's the complete basketball player. Last year, Billy Donovan won the admiration of Providence College fans with his skills, but he captured their hearts with his last second heroics. Time after time, Donovan won games in the closing seconds. The game against Boston College still lives in both Patino's and Donovan's mind. Zero, zero, zero on the clock when it left his hands. And that was one of the shots I did not think all year that we're going in at the buzzer. I didn't think it had a chance. It was short. Uh, of course, you got the BC rim that has worn down a little bit since Jimmy O'Brien played. And uh, uh, we got a break on that shot. Well, I guess the game was tied. And uh, in regulation time, I made the front end of a one-on-one -on -one and missed the the second shot and the game went to overtime. I think after the experience against St. John's, Fallon Walter Berry towards the end, uh, I was a little down after that and I realized the, there's still five minutes left in the game and we could still win the game. I think Donnie, ba Donnie Brown penetrated and kicked it back to me and I gave a ball fake and took one dribble and I was just thankful that the shot went in. That shot went in and so have a lot of others for Billy Donovan these past couple of years. He's gone from bench warmer to one of the Big East premier guards. Weekly now, he plays before those big crowds he dreamed about as a youngster. The perfect story, right? Well, there's one thing Billy Donovan would change, and if you know him, the answer is no surprise. If you could do it all over again, is there anything you'd change? I'd probably try to play more basketball, if I could. <laughs> I thought you were going to tell me you'd be 6'6". Six, six. <laughs> <laughs> that, would, that would help, too. <laughs> Well, if Billy was 6'6", six, six, he would not be able to handle the ball as effectively, and he certainly probably wouldn't be as accomplished as a three-point field goal shooter. Here's your score at halftime. Providence leading Georgetown 44-36. We'll come back to the center in Providence after these words from your local station. Halftime score, Providence Friars leading Georgetown's Hoyas 44-36. Thus far, Dave Gavin, it has been as advertised. Both teams are pushing the ball up the floor. Thus far, Providence with 11 points from their bench. Paco Screen has nine of those 11. Well, I think Screen's been a big difference in the game defensively as well because he snapped back on the defense and done a good job of being the second man in to help on Reggie Williams. The energy level in the first half has just been unbelievable. And these two teams are in great condition. Credit to their coaches. They use a lot of people, but I'm not sure if I've seen a game in a long time that's had as many bodies on the floor diving for loose balls as we've seen in the first 20 minutes here. We don't have the statistics yet as to the free throw shooting for Georgetown, but I have to believe it's been very good. Well, I think that's the difference on the scoreboard is that the Hoyas have had opportunities at the line with 15 minutes to go in the first half. They were on the line for one and one. Providence had already used the six fouls and were in the bonus, but Georgetown really didn't make Providence pay for that. It's not been uh, a problem that's been confined to this game, to be honest with you. The Hoyas have had time times uh, this year where they've not shot the ball very well from the foul line. Now away from these two teams a couple of Syracuse standouts had outstanding weeks. Of course Ronnie Cycli the Syracuse center was the Dodge player of the week 15 points 14 rebounds and four block shots against Villanova had 11 points eight rebounds and two blocks as well as the game winning free throw a free throw and I'll say that right against St. John's. Well Cycli has all of the credentials to be a great player. The only thing he needs is more consistency. And this last week he, he had some consistency. Of course, Ronnie's getting a lot of help off the boards from a freshman named Derek Coleman, who of course would be our freshman of player of the week, the Plymouth freshman of the week. Derek for Syracuse, 17 points against Villanova, eight against St. John's, but he had nine rebounds. There were two freshmen that caught everyone's eye at the Olympic Festival in Houston last year, which is the 48 outstanding young high school seniors and college freshmen. Derek Coleman was one. J.R. Reed from North Carolina was the other, and both of them have uh, given no evidence of slowing down. Some of the critics of the Big East have said this is a down year for the Big East Conference. Four teams are in the top 20. Look at the standings for the Big East Conference. You'll see some records that are pretty impressive. Syracuse 17 and 2, Georgetown 14 and 2, Providence 14 and 3. But look at the league records. Talk about balance. Well, if you look at if you look at it overall, I think the thing that jumps out at me is Providence and Pittsburgh lumped right there, tied for second with Georgetown 14 and 3, 15 and 4. 
the, the normal names have been Syracuse, Georgetown, St. John's, Villanova. St. John's, Villanova aren't bad. In fact, they're very good. St. John's is ranked. But look at those two that are up there. And what that means for the top four is two more tough road stops. My goodness, John Thompson's got to sit over on that bench tonight and say, thank God I've already been to Pittsburgh and get out with a win. Got to come here. Syracuse came in here and got a win. St. John's is coming here on Saturday. A lot of people still have to go to Pittsburgh. And Providence and Pittsburgh, I think it's been their emergence that's made it tough. The results this week have been a little surprising. Monday night, Pittsburgh at the Carrier Dome. What an incredible effort by the Panthers, not only beating Syracuse, but beating them. And the score of the game was not as close as that score, a 14-point game. I agree, and it was, the, it was the Jerome Lane, Charles Smith show. Jerome Lane has become a big-time rebounder par excellence, and you saw a heck of a win for Connecticut last night, Howard, in the Boston Garden. Connecticut lost the services of Phil Gamble and Cliff Robinson because of academics, and I said at the beginning of the telecast last night, they were like an octopus that had two of their tentacles cut off. The other six got stronger, and then, of course, you saw the game at the bottom. Villanova played a great second half. I think as well as Villanova can play, they're, they're not, their personnel in the front court is a little shy this year. St. John's made a couple big athletic plays to win that one. St. John's next stop is right here in the Providence Civic Center. And if the Friars can hang on to this lead against Georgetown tonight, you can imagine what will be wa awaiting Louis Karnasecker and company on Saturday when they come in here. All right, briefly, Dave, you're John Thompson. What do you do to cut down that eight-point lead? Well, I think John just uh, will make a couple of adjustments, and, and one of them probably will be to start doing a little screening on the baseline to free Reggie Williams. Providence has done a good job of passing Reggie off from one player to another. I think you'll see more man-to-man -man principles in the Georgetown offense. Look to see Reggie Williams more in the offense this half. All right, Providence is ahead by eight. But believe me, if you've seen Georgetown play any time at all, you know that they are tough regardless of what the deficit is in their face. They showed it against DePaul over the weekend. We'll come back for the second half of tonight's game. Providence leading Georgetown 44-36 at halftime. Civic Center in Providence, Rhode Island. Here's your score at halftime. The Friars in front, 44-36. I'm Howard David along with Dave Gavitt. First half statistics from the free throw line. Georgetown has had a rough night. They're 14 of 25 from the charity stripe. It has not been very charitable. Now you can see the rest of the uh, statistics. Team shooting about a little bit higher than what they normally do. And three-point range, Georgetown is 0 for 5. Providence has done a great job defending three-pointers all year long. They work at it. The rebounds, uh, I think, in Providence's favor, really, that's an interesting one. Turnovers, uh, 9 and 11. I think the thing that's amazing is I sat here until these stats came up at the half. I didn't realize Billy Donovan had not scored a point. Billy Donovan has played well. He just hasn't had many opportunities to shoot the ball. But for Providence to be ahead eight without Billy Donovan having a point is really uh, is really something. Actually, Reggie Williams uh, with eight points is far below his norm at, for this stage of the ball game. Friars have done a good job limiting his output. Uh, look for Georgetown to try to do some things to get Reggie more into the offense this half. All right, let's look at the Providence scoring, and you can see that it is Brooks and Kipfer that have kept them in the game. Screen with nine points in nine minutes. Billy Donovan, as Dave Gavitt brought out, has not scored yet. The man came into the ball game tonight averaging 20.8 points per game, and we are underway second half. And Pop Lewis, who had to sit most of the first half in foul trouble, back. He gives him that third three-point threat now. Georgetown opening in the matchup zone. For Georgetown, it's Perry McDonald, Dwayne Bryant, Ronnie Highsmith, Mark Tillman, Reggie Williams. For Providence, Pop Lewis, Yasek Duda, Billy Donovan, Delray Brooks, and Dave Kipfer. Crowd beginning to settle back in. As we begin the second half, Providence in front by eight points. They led by 11. Georgetown drew even at 29. And then Providence went wild late in the, in the half. Lewis far short, but gets the rebound. Providence has been quick and opportunistic all night long. Good pass aside. Kipfer with the kiss. Dave Kipfer with 12 points. All court pressure. Bryant quickly up the floor. McDonald, Reggie Williams in the paint. Inside, Highsmith with the follow. He misses it, but they keep it alive. That's the key. Turn around, Williams. Basket counts and a foul. Crowd was yelling three-second violation. Got to have possession to be three seconds. You know, he's in there a long time, but the ball's being shot. So you can see the crowd yelling, but this is really kept alive by Ronnie Highsmith. And what a contortionist move, almost a 270-degree a turn by Williams to get it to go down. 
So Reggie Williams to the free throw line, an 83% shooter, the only player left from the 84 championship team. Reggie's struggling from the line. He's missed his last three in a row. And that's very unusual. Lewis, three-point try, far short. Last touched, I believe, by Georgetown. It'll be Providence ball. You know, the energy level is so high that on every play, you've got both benches up looking for something. That time, Pop Lewis wanted the foul. Georgetown wanted the foul on the recovery in the corner. Uh, uh, Reggie's left foot might have been on the sideline. And in any event, it was Providence ball. We played a minute and a half in the second half. 46-38, Providence. Anything can and does happen in Big East basketball. I saw it last night when UConn, after losing two starters, beat Boston College at the Boston Garden. Seton Hall beat Georgetown twice this year. Here's Williams on the break. McDonald with a step on Lewis, who already has three fouls, and he was obviously aware of that. He had to be careful. He didn't want to get one tracking him down. Providence just needs to make sure that Georgetown doesn't get a run on him. Georgetown obviously wants to try to make their defense become a real factor here early in this half. Lewis wanted the three-point try. This is Kipfer. Takes it inside. An excellent defensive play by Reggie Williams. The lead to Mark Tillman. And we get a foul called, I believe, on Duda. Yasik Duda commits the personal. That is his third. Correction, it is his fourth. Tillman got hit on the on the hand, uh, maybe on a crazy bone on the elbow as he's grabbing his hand. Steve Wright will come quickly into the game for Providence. There's Tillman with a good strong move, followed by Duda. I think he got it on the elbow. You see him holding his hand here at the foul line. And I think he's hurt. Thompson's looking down the other end here at the Providence student section under the basket at the Providence end of the court. He's angry about something. And now he's yelling at Patino. And the, and the student, now the students are into it. Now the two coaches are going at it at midcourt. And now a technical foul has been called on Patino. On both he, of them. On both of them is right. So John and uh, Patino a little bit angry at each other. John, once upon a time, was a big favorite. And meanwhile, as you look at the bench, we're getting a techno. I believe there were at least the two technical fouls called, one on each coach. I think you got a coaching box violation yep. called on each coach. What I don't know is what got John so upset in the, in the first place. You see the foul here. Tillman was at the line, obviously hurt. Maybe the student body was getting on Tillman. I'm not sure. But he got very, very angry at something going on at the opposite end of the court. And then he and Patino got into it. So Jaron Jackson will go to the line and shoot two technical free throws. The bench they're, technical is two. They're still jawing at each other over there in the sideline. Jaron Jackson makes the first technical. Meanwhile, Mark Tillman is being escorted out of the arena with his hand wrapped in ice. I don't know. He, you know, it's not beyond the realm of possibility. His hand could be broken because he got it pinned against the backboard, slapped against the backboard. Then you see Tillman leaving. Laurie Michael taking him to the training room, and I, I could tell when he was at the foul line that he was in pain. Now the players are getting into it at midcourt. Looks like Jackson and Steve Wright. And Reggie Williams calls a team huddle at one side, Billy Donovan at the other. Okay, the first two free throws were were, were the uh, replacement free throws for Tillman. Now Reggie Williams oh. is going to have two on the bench technically. You know, he's in a lot of pain, and justifiably so, due to smacked his hand against the glass. Reggie Williams struggling at the free throw line. He's missed five in a row. He misses both the bench technical, and now Donovan will try to pick up the two at the other end. And Thompson is still incensed on the sideline. John Thompson, who graduated from Providence College in 1964. Billy Donovan makes the free throw, the first technical. That is Billy's first point of the night. He hits both, and it's a seven-point game.
And I, I'd, I'd love to know why John is so angry. And that had to have something to do with a crowd reaction to... Here it is. We're seeing the two of them nose to nose. Well, not nose to nose. Patino's a little shorter. Just a bit. And John is really furious. And so is Patino. The assistant coaches in the roles of peacemakers over there. All right. Play back in. Seven-point game. Providence in front with 17 and a half to play in regulation. Talk about a game as advertised. Reggie Williams with a fake on Pop Lewis. And a traveling violation against Reggie Williams. Ball was made by Hannon. And the, the official on the play, Jim Howell, did not make the call. Well, that's okay. I mean, coaches will play that game, but, but if a guy sees travel, he's got to call it. Hannon had it. Delray Brooks, great long-range shooter. Donovan lost control, and Ronnie Highsmith with the steal to Williams for the stuff. That will quiet the crowd down. How many times have you seen Georgetown in the face of adversity just come out and play tougher? A lot of people have been critical of Georgetown. When Patrick Ewing played for the Hoyas, it was the, the allegations of we against them. And I'm not sure that it was justified, but that's the way a lot of people saw it. Here's Dwayne Bryant. And Reggie from three-point range. Doesn't get it to go, but Highsmith with the follow. His first point of the night. And Georgetown within three, and Providence calls timeout. We have played three and a half minutes in the second half. John Thompson's Hoyas trailing Rick Pitino's Providence Friars 48-45. The Plymouth player of the game to be selected at the conclusion of this game and during every game televised with the Big East Conference Television Network as part of the Chrysler Corporation sponsorship of Big East Basketball. Howard David and Dave Gavitt at the Providence Civic Center where 12,500 plus are seeing uh, uh, something that was supposed to be. Well, we, you know, rare, rarely do you see what's come, what comes in as advertised. Well, the energy level in this game has been tremendous. Lewis from downtown gets front rim. He's been short his last three times. Bryant in transition to McDonald. Here's Reggie Williams over Steve Wright. Reggie Williams now taking charge for Georgetown as the Hoyas climb within one. And they've had six unanswered since Donovan made the two free throws. Let's keep that in mind all off that confrontation with Thompson on the sideline. And his team has picked energy up from that, but this crowd is not out of this game. They've been in it from uh, the opening whistle, and they're in it now. Donovan, three-pointer. Off the mark, and Reggie Williams with a long rebound. And you can tell the intelligence of the senior. He runs into Steve Wright, and a foul is going to be called on Wright. Reggie really set this up as he veers off to the side, and Wright running with his head down bumps into him. That's the third team on Providence this half. Georgetown yet to be called for a foul. Wayne Bryant, you'll notice his backcourt mate Mark Tillman is not on the game if you just tuned in. He's taken into the dressing room. We don't know the extent of his injury, but it involved his left hand. Highsmith with the jump hook. Everybody crashing, and Jonathan Edwards or Highsmith is going to get nailed for a foul. One of the two of them. I think it's Highsmith. It is Ronnie Highsmith. John Thompson on the board of directors of the Basketball Hall of Fame. Certainly one of the most respected coaches in the United States. Otherwise, he wouldn't be coaching the 88 Olympic team. And Rick Patino, the young guy that's come in here and turned this thing around in two years and really making his mark, and they've both prepared their teams well for this game. Donovan has had a lot of good shots. They just haven't gone down for him. Well, he got Perry McDonald in the air, and unfortunately when you go up, you're going to have to come down sometime, and he did, but right on Donovan. You know, given the kind of uh, shooting luck that Billy Donovan's having, Patino's got to be saying, hey, you know, we're up 1, 15.09 to play. Billy's not really got it going yet. He's got to feel pretty good about that. Kipper, the outside pass to Brooks, three-pointer. Delray Brooks with and 14 they, points. And they look for that. They try to go inside out to set up the three-pointer, the pass into the post, get the defense to clap down, and then have those shooters fanning out on the three-point line. Good feed by Kipper. The kind of re a reverse psychology. Usually you want it the other way. You want to try to work the ball inside. Providence works it the other way. Reggie Williams, pretty move. Oh, is he smooth. Uh, you called it at the half. You said, look for Reggie Williams to have a big second half, and he indeed is doing that. 
Reggie already has 16 points. He had eight at halftime. He's already matched that total through the first five minutes and 24 seconds. A two-point game with Providence in front. They led by eight at halftime. Donovan, three-pointer. His first of the night. Billy Donovan with five. Usually the cream rises to the top. Reggie Williams for Georgetown. Billy Donovan for Providence. Here's a steal by Kipfer. One man to beat Bryant. He goes over the top of Bryant. Basket counts. Now is it a charge or a blocking foul? I think it's a block, and I think they called the goal good. Goal should be good. Two quick three-pointers and a steal off the press. And Providence, who had seen the deficit cut to one, is back in it. The roll is around and in. Meanwhile, the other way. The other angle we see it. The basket counts. That is 14 points for David Kipfer. And he's had a game, hasn't he? Oh. He and, he and uh, Duda have both given Providence a real big boost inside. We still have 14 minutes and 13 seconds of this. Can you stand it? Well, I can handle it all right. And the <laughs> players I know are in great shape. It's the coaches and the crowd I'm more worried about. Kipfer with 15 points. Averages 12 per ball game. Eight-point lead. Highsmith took too many steps. No question about it. John Thompson shaking his head as his players are running up the floor. He knew that the man traveled with it. Charles Smith getting ready to come into the game. And Howard, this crowd is really about 60% of them on their feet now. And one more three-pointer by somebody, and this place will will explode. 57-49, Providence with 14.05 remaining. Delray Brooks and a foul is called on uh, Bobby Winston. <laughs> Mickey Crowley, the the official here, the one of the I guess the lead official, and a timeout is being called for. I'll continue that thought in a moment. But we have 13 minutes and 59 seconds remaining, second half. Providence leading Georgetown, 57-49. We'll come back after these words from your local station. The Providence Civic Center is center stage of the Big East Conference tonight. We are seeing a basketball game that so typifies the fiber of this conference. Providence leading by eight. Delray Brooks to the line for two shot free throws. Free throw shooting has not been sterling tonight. Now, one of the things that happens when you see a game that's played at this pace, at this high energy level, is that when kids get to the foul line, they can't calm them down, calm themselves down enough to, to be precise. That's a good point. Nine point lead for Providence. Charles Smith in the game, and he almost throws it away. Winston with the save, but right into Kipper's hands. Quickly to Billy Donovan. Billy looking for the foul, and he draws it. He's trying to shoot that one from the hip. Bobby Winston commits the personal foul. Winston actually made the mistake initially. Got trapped. Well, he didn't make the mistake, but the ball was thrown behind him. He sort of got hung up, and Donovan uh, took it into the lane there and really did well to get it off. And Jim Howell did well to hustle to catch up with that play. You want to talk about conditioning? How about these three refs trying to go 94 feet up and down with these guys? They better be in good shape. Billy Donovan named the Providence College Male Athlete of the Year last year. Fifth on the all-time Providence list in assists. Harry McDonald coming back for the Hoyas, and I see Mark Tillman back out on the Georgetown bench. He's sitting down right, Mike Riley kneeling in front of him. I can't see his hand because Mike's blocking me. Tillman was injured after being fouled by Yasik Duda and actually pinned against the backboard. Great defense by the Friars, and Billy Donovan commits the foul. That is his third. Not a foul that Patino wanted. Providence made a nice little subtle change in their press there, and they waited until the ball got over the timeline, then trapped it using the 10-second line as the back guard, and, uh, and Billy reached in. 
All right, now you see Tillman. You get a shot of his left hand, you'll see his thumb on his left hand is taped. But that is all. It is not his... He, he looks like he's hurting, though. You look at his face. You see him holding that, that hand gingerly. Delray Brooks goes out. Carlton Screen, who had an exceptionally good first half with nine points, comes into the game. McDonald. Paco Screen wiped it away from him, but Reggie Williams reacquires. Jonathan Edwards is fouled by Dave Kipfer. And Jonathan Edwards... Wanted to get into it with Kipfer, and Kipfer just took <laughs> off. Yeah, that's not Kipfer backing down, I don't think, because he's pretty tough, too. And now Perry McDonald, uh, I think I think what happened is that Jonathan got cut over the eye. Obviously, it was not intentional. Kipfer going for the ball on the way up. You can see it. There's Jonathan. Kipfer just going reached over him. Tried to, tried to bang the ball. Jonathan Edwards missed a lot of action in December from his back injury, but on the Big East All Freshman team. Well, it was a tough thing for Georgetown to play as long in December as they did without Jonathan, but, but one of the things that happened as Conlon comes in for Kipfer, Kipfer will get a hand now, you know, for the wrong reasons, yeah. but uh, is that it did give Highsmith and uh, Jefferson and some other younger kids some playing time. All right, here's Edwards. Edwards to the line for two. Jonathan Edwards with three points in the ball game. Hey, take another look at this foul, and he hit the ball, and then his arm came right down across uh, Jonathan's eye. And then it was off to the races for yeah. Kipper. He didn't want any part of Edwards. He's heading, he's heading for the border, the Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> That's where he came from. The lead to Pop Lewis, and Bobby Winston's going to get tagged for the personal foul. That's his third. And you wonder if Thompson's going to put uh, Mark Tillman back into the game where maybe he's called it a night for him. We'll have to wait and see. Bobby comes over. And probably right now, Bobby Winston's feeling like he is in the principal's office. <laughs> I don't think he's being dressed down. I think he's just getting <laughs> a few words of advice on the defense. Okay, here we go. 60 to 50, 13 11. Lewis, the alley oop to Steve Wright, and a foul is going to be called on Jonathan Edwards. Edwards claiming he was stationary and his hands were just straight up. Personal foul on Jonathan Edwards. That is his third. John Thompson, who once upon a time played behind Bill Russell, knows about the physical contact. He saw it in practice every day. Played behind Russell with the Celtic Championship teams of 65 and 66. And was acquired by the Chicago Bulls in expansion and decided that he didn't want to go and uh, started what has been a really remarkable coaching career. The thing that's amazing to me, when John came in 15 years ago and took over the Georgetown program, he had inherited a team that won three ball games the year before. And everybody figured, well, here's this guy Thompson. He's probably going to be a pretty good coach. Maybe we'll get an occasional NIT bid. Nobody expected him to accomplish what he has thus far. Oh, absolutely. And a lot of people didn't want him hired. Said, why hire a high school coach? Well, Maryland might be asked that same question right now, but we'll see what Mr. Wade can do. Well, he can coach. There's no question about that. 12-point lead. Reggie Williams cuts it to nine with a three-pointer. Reggie Williams with 19 points. 11 this half. Surge, counter-surge, and you've got to be uh, impressed with both teams. In the Hoyas, you expect. They're always going to come back on. They've been in there before so many times, but this is a little new for Providence, and as you said, they've seen leads go down and come right back strong. Reggie Williams with the lead to Dwayne Bryant to Perry McDonald. There's Williams for three. Can't leave Reggie alone. Not when he's on fire. Streak shooters are like that. They will burn you. you he has 22. Would you believe the man has 22 points and at this point in the game? With about four minutes to go in the first half, he had five. 12-20 remaining, and Reggie Williams has brought the Hoyas within six, but Donovan doesn't get it to go. Conlon with the follow, rejected by Reggie Williams. He is taking charge now, Mr. Williams is. Here comes Guillory to give Edwards a break. Conlon and Screen out. Delroy Brooks and Kipfer back in. 62-56, Hoy is trailing the Friars by six with 12 minutes remaining. Georgetown running Reggie corner to corner now, trying to free him for the three, but you'll see Providence almost pass him off. Brooks there almost playing a man-to-man -man on the top. Jaron Jackson, short. 
Yes, but Reggie with the rebound. Guess who, right? Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? Incredible. I mean, he, he's, he's done it at both ends in a little three-minute stretch here and, and brought the Hoyas back. Uh, that's Providence's sixth team, so no shots involved. Next one puts them over the bonus. Georgetown is over the bonus. We'll go 11.50 with free throws the rest of the way. Bryant on the inbound to who else? Reggie Williams. 24 points for Reggie Williams from Dunbar in Baltimore. They produced a few players. There's going to be a timeout call for by Providence with 11.40 remaining. The Friars lead. One time was 12, is now four. We'll come back to the Civic Center in Providence after these words from your local station. To further underscore what Reggie Williams means to the Georgetown Hoyas, Georgetown has scored 22 points in this half to cut the lead to four. Reggie Williams has 16 of those 22 points in this half and 14 rebounds for good measure. And a couple of block shots and I a just, steal that I recall. Something I just saw is worth repeating. I'll tell you in a second. Here's Kipfer to the basket. Doesn't get it. He's fouled by Guillory. I saw Dave Kipfer getting ready to inbound the ball in front of the Georgetown bench. And John Thompson walked over and gave him a pat on the rump. You don't see. Nobody sees that. Now the little stuff. And really, if there's been a guy that's been the heart and soul and the guts of this Providence team tonight with the performance they've had to this point, it's this guy at the foul line right now. And he's got 15 points and a bundle of, of charges and blocks and all kinds of action. Kipper missing the front end of the two-shot foul. People in Providence know the tremendous job that Patino did with Donovan, slimmed him down, really made him into an offensive player, but he's done some job with Kipper too. <laughs> Two free throws missed. Guillory with the rebound, and here come the Hoyas. They can cut it to two, or maybe one. Jaron Jackson, inside pass to Guillory, and it's squatted away by Pop Lewis. Mark of respect for a great player. Providence is now playing a diamond-switching matchup zone on that trip, and they had Delray Brooks playing Reggie Williams man-to-man. -man. Almost being double-teamed every time he gets close to the basket. Brooks is fronting him. A little mismatch in size there. They're putting a chaser on him. It's a diamond and one. A chaser on Reggie Williams. Bryant double teamed. Inside it goes. And the lay in by Perry McDonald. And a hard working lay in. Cuts the lead to two. That was a great pass by Bryant. Great pass by Bryant that time, Howard. Providence has had a counter surge, haven't they? Every time they've had an answer. Now they're going to be forced to do it again. Lewis. They look for the three-pointer. All the three-point shooters out beyond the lane. Here's Kipper with the turnaround. It doesn't go. And who else with the rebound but Reggie Williams? His 15th rebound of the night. Man, is he having a half? They can tie it right here. 10.30 remaining. Fires back to their normal zone now, but still trying to match up with Williams. There he is, weak side. There's a mismatch here. Williams guarded by Donovan. It's okay as long as it's out there. <laughs> Not okay for Providence if it gets inside. Georgetown being patient. Keep moving without the ball. Three-pointer is over the backboard and out of bounds. It will be Providence ball with a two-point lead and 10-15 to play. That Ricky Patino is captain of the UMass team in 74. That shot by Reggie might have appeared to be a little bit of a force, but to be honest with you, Kipper just made a heck of a defensive effort to, to change it at the end. Donovan comes up the ball, trailed all over. Delray Brooks with the fake, the jumper, no good. The rebound, swatted out of bounds. Last touch by Georgetown, I believe. It'll be Providence ball as Steve Wright comes into the game. Charles Smith and Jonathan Edwards for Georgetown, replacing Jackson and Guillory. We've played 30 minutes and two seconds, clock moving, and the pace of this game has not decreased. It's just an increase. Delray, again with the fake, wants to go inside. Are we going to get a foul? Probably on uh, Charles Smith. Charles Smith committing the foul that is only his first, but Georgetown is over the limit. Providence is at the limit. And this will be a two-shotter as Brooks is on the way up to the shooting motion. Smith reached in and got him. Delray Brooks once upon a time, a Mr. Basketball in Indiana. Went to the University of Indiana. Things didn't quite work out there under Bobby Knight. Elected to leave North Carolina State, had an interest in Delray, and he elected to come here to Providence. He makes them both. I would say he's probably pretty happy about his decision right about now, wouldn't you? I think Patino's a little happier. 
It's a four-point lead for the Friars with 9.45 to play. And here comes Reggie Williams. What a dish to McDonald. Great. He draws the defense and then lays it off. That was an unbelievable transition basket. The lead's at two again. Whoever the coach was that said one man doesn't make a difference is probably out of coaching. <laughs> that guy makes the difference. Indeed. Kipper right to the basket, and he's going to get... Oh, I'm surprised. All right. On first look, it looked like Kipper went over the top of McDonald, but McDonald's called for the blocking foul. No complaint by Perry. It was a good, quick pass into Kipper. I think he was stationary. I just don't think he was directly in front of him. Couldn't tell from that angle. Providence, 4-2 and two in the Big East. Their wins have come over B.C., Villanova, and UConn twice. Their losses, a four-point loss after a terrific game against Syracuse and a nine-point loss to Pittsburgh. The Pitt game on the road. Pitt still have, has to come here, and Pitt still has to go to Georgetown. Coming off a big, big win against Syracuse on Monday night. Kipper makes both free throws. He has 17 points tonight. Way over his average of 11.9. It's a four-point lead for Providence. Started to say earlier, I brought up Mickey Crowley, one of the officials. And the game gets tough. And the, a game like this, it's so physical. Mickey Crowley is the right guy to have as one of your officials because he's been there a long time. Well, all three of these guys have Crowley and Hannon, very veteran officials. Jim Howell, a uh, veteran of ACC work for many years. And Jim Howell's worked in the Final Four a couple of times. There, there are no rookies in this crew. Ricky Petito coached for five years at Boston University, at which time he had a 91 and 51 record. Then he went on, coached a couple of years with UB Brown with the Knicks. Probably learned a little something from UB. You know, a lot of people criticized UB in New York when he was coaching the Knicks, but one of the things you can't be critical of him is the intensity level that he generates. There, a look at Mark Tillman, who probably will not play anymore tonight. He couldn't see the bandaged thumb on his left hand. see the little bit of a look of pain on Tillman's face. That, that's the thing that uh, struck me when he came back out to sit on the bench. Three-point game. Providence in front. Right with the jump shot. You don't expect him to take that. Yeah, he broke out of the double team and made a runner. That's a tough shot. And again, the counter surge. Georgetown had it to two place, and now Providence boosts it back up to five. 8.50 remaining. Smith, Bryant, Williams, Edwards, and McDonald for Georgetown. McDonald with the left hand. Rebound, Kipfer. And a jump ball, terrific defensive play by Reggie Williams. The possession will give the ball to Georgetown, uh, to uh, Providence. You talk about quick hands. McDonald made a good move. Kipfer made a big effort on the board. He didn't see Reggie. There's Reggie, came in from behind. Got ball. Okay, here's the Georgetown press. Donovan leading. Steve Wright and he almost didn't see the pass coming. He's running with his head down. Last time he did that, uh, Reggie got a foul on him. Five point game. Providence in front with 8.24 to play. Donovan, three pointer. Off the mark. Rebound McDonald. He's got Smith down on the left side, but he slows it up. Williams, who's been on fire in the second half with 16 of his 24 points. Again, Howard, though, you almost have the feeling that if Donovan ever finds it, and he's been consistent all year, that that could be enough to get it done for the Friars. McDonald is fouled over the top. I believe it is Steve Wright. It's either Steve Wright or Daryl Wright. And as Pop Lewis checks back in, and, uh, and, Steve Wright. and Daryl Wright goes out of the game, the foul is on Steve Wright as third. Take a look at foul trouble. Pop Lewis, the only one with four. Papa Lewis has four fouls. Steve Wright has three. Duda has three. Nobody in real serious foul trouble. For lot, Georgetown, nobody. A lot of people with three on both teams. McDonald, a 70% free throw shooter. A strange rotation on the ball, or is it my imagination? It, it, it is strange, because in the first half, he had a couple different times he shot it a little differently hand on the side of the ball rather than directly behind. Whatever works for you. That oh, time, here's God. Reggie with the follow, and he is fouled by Steve Wright. All the little things. The offensive board, the defensive board, the bringing it through pressure. Keeping Steve it alive. Wright commits his fourth foul, and Yasek Duda checks back into the game. 
Okay, here's the miss. Now Reggie Williams, you see, you got to block him out. He goes over the back of Steve Wright, keeps it alive. Might have gotten away with a little push off before he went up. Reggie's still having his troubles at the free throw line, and he's the best free throw shooter on the Georgetown team. Hoyas have won four games this year in the Big East Wars. They have dropped two, both to Seton Hall. Might be ranked number one in the country without those two Seton Hall losses. Would be the only undefeated team, wouldn't they? Steele is created by the Hoyas. They can get it within one. It's a three-point game with 7.40 remaining. Howard David and Dave Gavitt at the Providence Civic Center. Bryant, good drive. The follow does not go, and a foul is going to be called on Yasik Duda. That is his fourth. And now the foul problems start to become evident. And what's happening now a little bit to Providence in their defense is they're, they're paying such attention to Reggie Williams on the perimeter that Georgetown's able to sneak people in on that baseline behind him. Now the official scorer has now has indicated that Yasik Duda has five fouls, so he's fouled out of the game. Steve Wright comes in. Yes, indeed, Duda's out of there. Duda leaves the game with seven points. That is twice as many as he normally scores. He gave him a big first half, real big first half for Yasik Duda. So McDonald now can cut the lead to one. No one's left, Howard. <laughs> They're all here. Everybody's checking their ticket stubs to make sure they have a souvenir of what's turned out to be a real thriller. It's a two-point game. Look at the Hoya hands. Everybody moves. Donovan now. The dish to Lewis. The follow by Kipfer. Should be a technical foul. I thought Kipfer was hanging on the rim. A four-point game. Providence's Dave Kipfer has 19 points. Seven over his average. It's usually Donovan that's slamming the door on you when you're trying to come back. Tonight it's been Kipfer. I watched Donovan last year against Seton Hall at the Meadowlands. Hit a jumper at the buzzer. Three-point try and Reggie Williams. Oh, man. 28 points and it's a one-point game. Providence knew right where he was, too. Delray Brooks. A rebound of Reggie Williams as he rips it out of the hand of Pop Lewis. And Hoyas can take the lead with 6.40 to play. Well, it's a big trip for the Friars if they can slam the door on the lead now. They've done it so many times tonight. Thrust, counter thrust, parry back and forth. And you'll see Georgetown be patient here. Both teams playing all-out basketball. Reggie Williams with 30 points. Oh, my goodness. He's made the last two jump shots under good pressure, good defensive pressure, both of them. The Hoyas lead for the first time tonight, 71-70. Williams has 22 this half. <laughs> Amazing. And now Providence probing. They'll be patient. Donovan has been ice cold tonight. Billy with seven points came in averaging 21 per ball game. Here's the screen for him. Traveling violation and a good call by Jackie Hannon as Marty Conlon comes into the game, the freshman. John Thompson has to feel a whole lot better about the way things were going. New England Player of the Year in 64. An outstanding career at Providence College. Was with the team when they were in two NITs and one NC2A tournament. Georgetown's going to take some time off the clock and hold it out now. And now you get to the chess match. Patino not wanting to come. I think that's a good move. Georgetown's too quick to defend in that four corners. Ultimately, because of the 45-second clock, they'll have to come and attack. And John knows that. He was just trying to tempt them out. 15 on the shot clock. 5-10 remaining in the game. Georgetown by one. They put the offense in motion with less than 10. With eight. With seven on the shot clock. With six. Charles Smith with four on the shot clock doesn't go but Williams with the follow blocked over the top and Conlon last man to touch it and the offensive boards that weren't really a big factor in the first half have been a big factor here in the second half Williams triggering the inbound to Dwayne Bryant new 45 and again the four corners from Georgetown and what Thompson's trying to do here I mean there's a long way to go in this one 447 He's trying to get Patino to take the bait, to come out and extend the defense, 
so he can use that quickness on the spread floor. Patino not taking the bait. He's going to sit back in. John says, fine, we'll get it down to 15 seconds, then we'll run our offense. Georgetown averages, or rather, Providence averages 90 points per ball game. They only have 70. Now they go into the offense with 10. Reggie Williams, three-point land. That was NBA three-point land. And that was a set play off the four corners. They see him call it from the sideline. Little circle move. Big shot for Reggie Williams and a big trip for the Friars. A four-point lead for Georgetown with 4.04 remaining, and Reggie Williams has 33 points. Donovan, three-pointer. Answers right back. And, and you, you just knew that Donovan was going to break out of it. And he broke out of it at the right time. Down four, and he puts him right back to one. Big, big shot for Billy Donovan. 74-73, Georgetown, and a timeout is called with 3.56 remaining. Hang on to your seatbelt, though. Just tighten it up a little bit. Georgetown is up by a point. Georgetown up by a 1, 74-73 at halftime. It was Providence, 44-36 in front by 8. They led at one point, 62-50, a 12-point margin. But mathematics will tell you that Georgetown has outscored Providence since that point, 24-11. Uh, and Gretchen Williams, I don't even think on fire is the right word. Look at this. 25 second half points. There's Kipfer with the putback. And if there's an MVP on the Friar side, you'd have to say it's David Kipfer, 19 points and just a whole bundle of energy. And here's the Friar press now. They worked on this in pregame, and here's a steal by the Friars. Providence, Ricky Patino had his team out here at 4.30 this afternoon, running through the things they wanted to do against the pressure. Well, that time Georgetown handled it well, got it in, and then they got him from behind. And Delray Brooks is very good at that, and Providence works hard on that. Brooks, Donovan, Lewis, they're all three-point marksmen, and they're all beyond three-point range here. And they're not going to get inside it too much. They just span out on that perimeter. Brooks looking for help. Georgetown, tremendous defense. 12 on the shot clock. 3.15 in the game. Donovan gets Smith in the air and he trips over Smith's feet two on one fast break make it a three on one Reggie Williams shot is blocked by Steve Wright what a play great play by Steve Wright really good dish off by Dwayne Bryant and Steve Wright with a heck of an effort came 75 feet on this all right here's the two on one Charles Smith good dish off there's Reggie thinks he's got it Steve Wright hustling the lane gets it Reggie Williams triggers the inbounds to Jonathan Edwards. Perry McDonald, Bobby Winston, and Charles Smith round out the five for Georgetown. Delray Brooks, Billy Donovan, Pop Lewis, Steve Wright, and Dave Kipfer for Providence. And Thompson throwing the four-corner bait out again, and the chess match continues. And now Providence is making a declaration. Delray Brooks is going to play Reggie Williams man-to-man, -man, and they'll try to go boxing one on this trip. Make somebody other than Reggie put it up. Perry McDonald setting what looks to be a screen on the right side of the lane. 15 on the shot clock coming up, as you can see it. Bobby Winston with the ball. That somebody could be Perry McDonald. They like to go to him inside. Shot clock at 7. Charles Smith down the line. He puts up a prayer, and it gets answered. Oh, my, what a shot. That shot clock was at 2 seconds when that was put up. Gutty move by Charles Smith. 2.10 remaining in the game, or at least until regulation. Georgetown is up by 3. What do you think Providence is looking for here? Pop Lewis ties the game. We are tied at 76. With 156 remaining. Now you have to start looking at the timeout board. One left for Providence, two for Georgetown. Boxing one defense on Reggie Williams. They want to make someone else put it up, Howard. Last time Charles Smith did and made it with two seconds on the shot clock. They're using McDonald as the screen. Minute and 30 to play. Williams on the turnaround is short. McDonald, though, with the rebound. Pitch stripped away by Kipfer, but he got the foul. Kipfer says, no, no foul. But Jim Howell says, oh, yes, foul. And then Kipfer patted him on the back and said, okay, <laughs> you win. <laughs> Minute and 25 to play, and Perry McDonald will go to the free throw line for two. 
a 70% shooter. He has had 14 points tonight. The three-pointer has brought the Friars back once again. And it brought Georgetown back with Reggie earlier. Perry McDonald has been to the line quite often tonight. Started out slowly. He has come back and been more proficient in the second half from the line. It's a one-point lead for Georgetown with a minute and 25 to play. Looked to me like it was, he threw that up a little bit extra hard looking for maybe a rebound. Now we'll see whether Patino wants the timeout or wants to keep playing. It looks like he's going to keep going. Georgetown a 1-3-1 one, one zone. They'll extend it and match up now. Providence can get the lead with either the two or the three Howard, but Georgetown's going to get it back one more time at least. Brooks is really being worked over by McDonald playing excellent defense. 20 on the shot clock. 55 to go in the game. Steve Wright's been open, wide open a couple of times on the baseline. The pressure outside's been enough that they haven't been able to find him. 10 one seconds. lead. Here's Donovan. Right side. Pop Lewis. Three-pointer. Good. Pop Lewis. 11 points in the game. The Friars are up by two with 39 seconds to play. Smith doesn't get it to go. Edwards with the rebound. It's stripped out of his hands, but a foul is going to be called. And Thompson was up on the sideline trying to get a timeout, but by then the ball had gone inside to Charles Smith. He'd squeezed it up, and Edwards goes to the glass. And now the Hoyas with a chance to tie. But if they do, the Friars will have the last gun. Steve Wright fouls out of the game. Second Friar to foul out. Yastik Duda was the other one. And now Patino makes the substitution. Marty Conlon will check in, the freshman from Bronxville, New York. Meanwhile, Jonathan Edwards, who's not a good free throw shooter. Jonathan Edwards on the season, Dave, is one for five from the free throw line. We have 30 seconds remaining in regulation. We may go beyond regulation tonight. Providence is up by two, but Edwards can tie it. One and one. Everybody in this place is on their feet. Won't say a word, let the action speak. We are tied at 79 with 30 seconds remaining. And Mark Tillman has come into the game, number 20. His left thumb is bandaged. We don't know the extent of his injury, but he's in the game. And there's a break in the action. 30 seconds to play. We are all even at 79. The story is in front of you on the graphic. We are tied at 79. There's 30 seconds remaining in the second half. Notice I didn't say in the game because it may go beyond. Both teams are over the limit. Both teams have one timeout remaining. The last this timeout that we're coming out of now was called by Georgetown. John Thompson wanting to set the defense. Rick Patino setting the offense, but both of them looking beyond what's going to happen next. What will Georgetown do here? I'd say they would probably be showing the 1-3-1 uh, the match. That's what that's been their bread and butter for most of this half and Providence uh, they wouldn't be surprised me to see them uh, go off that high two on two again. Thompson who has an economics major at Providence has a master's degree in guidance and counseling and he has counseled his players and he has guided them to this point. And I was wrong the Hoyas are coming out and going man to man. Georgetown has beaten Providence 11 straight times, and everybody's on their feet at the Providence Civic Center. There's the time remaining in the right-hand corner. Four corners. They've got to be careful. The five-second count now. Closely guarded five seconds will be a turnover and give the ball to the defense. Donovan with 10. Kipfer with 9. Donovan with the ball with 6. With 5. Right side. Pop Lewis. One second remaining. Pop Lewis sets the field goal. He hit his last three in a row. And I think it's a three-pointer. Three-pointer, they just gave the sign. He's hit three three-pointers in a row, Dave. 
There's a guy that was out of the game the first half. And it was the exact same play that the earlier shot by Pop Lewis in the corner. They set a strong two-on-two -two for Donovan at the high post. You see it here. Donovan comes off and he draws the help over, punches it in the corner. Lewis straddling over behind the three-point line. And bango, two in a row, three in a row, and those are big ones. From Pop Lewis's perspective, Spalding and Cotton go hand in hand. He's at three long-range bombs in a row. And the crowd at the Civic Center is absolutely wild. The player of the game, each and every telecast, the Plymouth player of the game, Reggie Williams. Nobody in the building, although Pop has hit three straight. Reggie scored 33 tonight, 25 in the second half to bring Georgetown back from eight down. Well, Reggie's been unbelievable, and I know Pop Lewis will get some enthusiasm, but I'll cast a minority vote with our crew for as well for David Kipper. I thought David Kipper was just magnificent. Okay, one second on the clock. Georgetown needs three points, not two. So the old play of throw it at the backboard won't work. Got a question for you. If you're Providence, do you intentionally foul? I do, yes. Most they can get two. Yep. Georgetown did that to DePaul on Sunday with a three-point lead. Do you let him in? I say you know, they got to be going down the length of the floor, but that won't get it. They've got to get a three-point shot. Anything beyond the three-point range can tie it. But one second remaining, and actually maybe talk, less than that. Talk about a mark of respect. they got two people on Reggie Williams. Bobby Winston to inbound. Jackson, did he get the shot away? No good. Providence beats Georgetown. 82-79, to 79, and look at pandemonium. At center court. And Thompson and Patino with their arms around each other. They got into a little bit of a hassle in the second half, but they knew darn well they were both part of a heck of a game tonight. Biggest win for Providence, certainly in the last decade, since your club beat North Carolina in the mid-70s. I would think so. And this crowd, I mean, they are standing to a man. The student body's on the court. Patino and Carl Screen hugging each other. Rick Pitino goes off the floor with his biggest win without a question of a doubt. In a year and a half, he's been coaching at Providence. But put the win in perspective as well. It takes Pitino to 5-2, and two, sole possession of second place in the Big East, and 15-3 and three overall with St. John's in the looming up on Saturday. Pop Lewis hit three in a row, including the winner. Final score, Providence 82, Georgetown 79. We'll come back in just a moment. While well, Reggie Williams is our player of the game with 33 points, Pop Lewis is the man of the hour. The Providence Friars, perhaps their biggest win in the last decade here in Providence, Rhode Island. They beat Georgetown 82-79. Along with Dave Gavitt, this is Howard David again, the final score. Providence 82, Georgetown 79. The preceding has been a Big East Conference television network production.